Okay, this will be a walkthrough on setting up a simulation to estimate a p-value. The scenario is this. XYZ Tire Company knows that on average 75% of their strong drive tires will last for at least 30,000 miles before failing, while 25% of the tires will fail before 30,000 miles. Their research lab has developed a new manufacturing method designed to increase tire mileage. They test out 25 new tires and find that only two of them failed before 30,000 miles. It seems like these are new tires, or these new tires are better, or could these improved results just be due to random chance? So let's set things up here. We found two tires that failed before. So the percent that actually failed before 30,000 miles is 2 out of 25 times 100, which is 8% after a little bit of computation. Now, what we're going to assume going forward is that what historically happened with the tires is still true. We're not going to assume that anything new is happening. So the null hypothesis is that 25% of the new tires will last 30,000 miles or less. The alternative hypothesis, it seems that, well, we only found 8% that last 30,000 miles or less, so it seems like we could say less than 25% of the new tires will last 30,000 miles or less. The null hypothesis is a statement that everything has stayed the same and whatever result we saw is due to random chance. The alternative hypothesis is what we're like, what we're trying to prove. Now, to write this in mathematical uh, mathematical terms, we use H for hypothesis, a subscript zero for the null. I put a colon because I'm about to list a hypothesis, and then the proportion P for proportion of tires is equal to 25 percent, 0.25. If you format this properly, that can actually look like a subscript. The alternative hypothesis, H sub A, H for hypothesis, A for alternative, colon, I'm going to list the hypothesis. The proportion of tires that I find is going to be less than 25%. On the null and alternative, this number is always going to be exactly the same. All I'm trying to say is that this is what happened in the past. We think it's probably still true in the alternative we're thinking that it's probably changed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to simulate this now in tinker plots. The simulation works as this. I'm going to grab a sampler. So I've got my sampler here. I'm going to put in a spinner and I'm going to set the percentages according to the null hypothesis. So I'm assuming 25% fail before and 75% then fail after 30,000 miles. And we gathered 25 tires, so I'm going to draw one tire 25 times, and I'm going to run it. Now what this is doing is it's taking from this population, where 25% fail before, 75% fail after, and pulling a sample of 25 different tires randomly. I can speed this up, and we, there we have our simulation. We have a bunch of befores and afters. Making a plot of that. I clicked on the attribute, grabbed a plot, I can separate the plot out, stack it to make it look nice, and turn the percents on. So even though the population was set up that 25% should fail before, by random chance, 36% of mine actually did fail before 30,000 miles. That's the statistic I'm interested in, so I'm going to right click and collect it. So I have that statistic. Now what's far more interesting is not just sampling this once, but what if we sampled this over and over and over and over again? Would we see results such as ours popping up? So according to the lab here, we want to run this 50 different times. So I'm going to collect 49 different trials. And we wait for a moment while that happens. You'll see this little collecting measures press escape to cancel. You just let this do its thing. What it's doing is 25 samples from this population, finding the percent that were before, gathering that statistic, and we're going to do that until we've got 50 such samples. 
This is not something that you would do as a human because you're not going to go out and gather 50 different samples of size 25. It's kind of absurd and it's not timely or cost effective. So let's see what happened with those. I'm going to click on that attribute, plot it, stretch my plot out so I can see it. I'm going to pull this pile of numbers out so I can see a histogram, stack them up, and here we go. Okay, so I've got a picture of what my data looks like. So I'm going to use the divider bar here. Oops, I'm going to pull it out just a little bit more. There's my divider. I'm going to turn the percents on. And what I'm interested in is testing my null hypothesis and my data. Well, my data said 8%. So up here, I want to see, let's see, what's the probability of getting 8% or fewer? The, null, or the alternative hypothesis says less than 25. I got 8. The chance of me getting 8% is right here. It's about a 2% chance. So I would say the p-value for finding our data, uh, even better, hold on. The probability of finding our data, that's the 8% that we found, assuming that the new tires are the same as the old, is less than or equal to 2%. That's really, really rare. And by rare, we mean less than the 5% cutoff that we typically use. So our conclusion is that this is statistically significant. And we reject the null hypothesis. All right, so well, that's really 8 and 9, I guess. So the interpretation here is that we seem to have evidence that suggests that fewer than 25% of the new tires will fail um, oh, I'm sorry, fewer than 30%, ah, jeez, fewer than 25% than of the new tires will last less than 30,000 miles. And that's it.